Welcome to 5 Minutes to Code, Programming Basics, with your host, Matthew C. Applegate. In this series, we are going to look at the fundamentals of computer programming. So whether you are hoping to program in Python, to code in C-sharp, or to develop in Java, these short guides should help you get to grips with the basics. You won't need to download or install any software, so just sit back and enjoy. In this series, we are going to be looking at binary, hexadecimal, data storage, logic gates, and logic circuits. Today, we are looking at logic gates. Let's look at this in more detail. Computers, as we know, use ones and zeros to store data. That is all they can understand at the moment. And how that data is stored and moved around is through using logic gates. Okay, let's look at some simple logic gates. The first one is a NOT gate. It takes any input and reverses it. So if A is equal to 1, X will be equal to 0. And the opposite is also true. This is the only gate that has one input and one output. The small inversion circle is quite an important thing to note. And this area here is called an interim. And we will talk about this later when we go into some of the more complicated gates. The next gate is the AND gate and it has two inputs and one output. It requires both inputs to be ones for the output to be one. So if A and B are ones, X will also be a one. If A is one and B is zero, X will be zero. The best way to remember an AND gate is that A needs to be equal to one and B also needs to be equal to one for X to equal one. The third type of logic gate is an OR gate. It requires either the A or the B to be a 1 for X to equal 1. A and B can both be 1 as well. It doesn't matter as long as one or the other is 1. X will be 1. It is very straightforward. If there is a 1 on the left hand side of an OR gate, then there will be a 1 on the right hand side of the OR gate. Now let's look at the next set of gates. We have already covered the NOT gate, which simply reverses the input. These next gates are a little more complex as they tend to perform two operations. Let's start with the NOR gate. It requires either the A or the B to be a 1 for X to equal 0. We will refer to this point as C or the interim. So if we have A equal to 1 and B equal to 0, C will equal 1. Once it goes through this inversion circle, however, it is reversed. Therefore, the answer to X is 0. Pretty straightforward when you include the interim. Again, both A and B could be 1s. The interim C would also be 1, and then X, after passing through the inversion circle, would be 0. Let's look at NAND gates. This works on a similar principle to an AND gate, but reverses or inverts the outcome at the end. So if A is equal to one and B is equal to zero, the interim C would be a zero. So going through to X through the inversion circle, it would make it a one. But if A and B are equal to one, C would also equal one, Going through the inversion circle, x would then be equal to 0. Finally, we have the XOR, which is an exclusive OR. Unlike the normal OR gate, it is a bit more picky. It only wants 1 and not both of the inputs to be 1. So if A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1, it will output a 0. But if A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0, it will output a 1 to x. It is really important to note that all logic gates with two inputs, the A and B are interchangeable. So for any example we have shown where A is one and B is zero, A could be zero and B could be one and you would receive the same outcome. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and comment below if you found it useful. Until next time, thanks for watching 5 Minutes to Code.